so quickly that it appears that there's some activity going on, because it's just light. Do you understand? So actually, at every moment, this body's changing, but it's just like, it appears to be a new, the same body, but actually it's a new mo- body at every moment. It's just being projected, because it's going so quickly, we're not perceiving, or we're not aware of the different changes. Just like if you take an atom, what, you know what an atom, is, they say an atom looks like? A tiny, tiny, tiny microscopic ball. Yeah, there's a little nucleus, right? Inside the atom, that's what they say. And there's an electron circulating around the atom. It's something like, uh, something like a big circle. Yeah, that's, that's what yeah. they say. A lot of electrons circulate. Yeah, like... So, uh, <laughs> sorry. It's like an it's all right. So, actually, it can't, it's, we say it's the same atom, but it's different at every moment. Because the electrons are in a different place at every moment. So it can't be the same atom. Because it's changing, it's different. If electrons here and the electrons here, it's not the same, it's changed. Similarly, our bodies are changing at every moment. But due to illusion, we think we're the same body. We think each one of these bodies we think is us. Although there, we have so many bodies, at every moment we're getting a new body, but we think, because of our false ego, that every, mo- every new body we get is ourself. <coughs> How many understand that? <coughs> so if we're not the body, and the body is always changing, who's changing the body? Yes. How is he doing it? By the <laughs> How is Christian changing it? Yeah. No, yes, yeah, you can do anything you want, but that doesn't explain. Anyone know ever anyone know the time factor is? Time, kala. Time how, what what is time changing? What's that? You can't read it. Nothing. Time is changing. Nothing. <laughs> everything. Yes. Time is changing everything. Is time? Time is changing everything everywhere in the whole universe. But what is? Does time ever change? Time changes. So time is changing everything. So, can anyone here do anything about time? No. Can you say, I don't want to grow older anymore? No. When you're 100 years old, will you say, I don't want to be 100, I want to be 99. Is that possible? No. So, time is changing everything. So, how can we perceive Krishna most immediately? What's the most obvious thing that we're under Krishna's control? <coughs> What's the most obvious thing that shows us that we're under Krishna's control? Yes. Time. What's that? Time factor, yes. No one can do anything about it. And it's changing everyone. Whether you're an atheist or a, a devotee, whether you're a human being or an animal, whether you're a demigod, time is changing everything. Everyone, everything is under control of time. And what can control time here? Can anyone control time even a little bit? No. Only Christian control, yeah. So actually we, we have Krishna's controlling all of us. Everything is under his control through his time factor in the material world. How else do we know that Krishna is controlling us? Yes. Where where is Krishna in our body? Yes. He's in our heart. Yes. What does he look like? Yes. 
Yes. Is it in this water What did you call? Uh, Super. Paramatma. So, what is our relation with Paramatma now? Does anyone have a relationship with Paramatma? Yes. Two of us. Three, four. Yeah. So how do we know what, how do, what is our relation with Paramatma now? How do we know Paramatma is there? Does anyone yes? Because Krishna's in our hearts. Yeah, of course, but he's in our how do you know he's there? What is he doing? How do we what's the most obvious thing that we know that he's in our heart? Yes. How do you know that? What's your experience of these fulfilling your desires? Did you put your stocking outside and set and you filled it up on Christmas? <laughs> How is Krishna interacting with us at every moment? How do you know that Krishna is how do you know that Krishna is with us? And what is our relation with Krishna at every moment? Has anyone read Bhag- in Bhagavad Gita, 15th chapter, verse number 15? What is verse 15? What's that? Savasya chaham ridi shani visho, akasmitir jnana maponam cha, vidaisya savaraham vidyo, vidaisya vidyo cha. What does that mean? Who knows the meaning? Who can give the translation? Yes. I am present in everyone's heart and from me come remembrance, knowledge, and forgetfulness. Um, By all the Vedas? By all the Vedas, I have to be known as the. And I am the compiler of the. Of the Vedanta. Um, and I know the. I know the Vedas as a... So, is anyone remembering anything right now? Did anyone, anyone ever try to remember something they couldn't remember? Why not? Has anyone tried to forget something they couldn't forget? <laughs> What about, just like, how many remember that verse 15-15 that you just heard? (laughs) So she remembers, yes. So so who's giving giving us remembrance? Yes, Krishna is giving us remembrance. And who's causing us to forget? What's that? Maya. Maya, yes. Krishna. Krishna is giving us remember Maya. But we want to remember Krishna. Who helps us remember Krishna? Krishna. And we want when we want to forget Krishna, who helps us to forget Krishna? Krishna. Well, Maya gives us Krishna because that's what we want. We give, Maya gives us forgetfulness because that's what we want. Everything depends upon what? Our desire. If we desire to remember Krishna, then Krishna helps us remember him. And if we desire to forget him, then Krishna helps us forget him. So for the devotee, Krishna helps the devotee remember Krishna. And he helps the devotee to get Maya. And he gives us intelligence so we can see everything in relation to Krishna. And what happens for the non devotee? Does Krishna help the non devotee remember him? He does. You know very many non devotees who remember Krishna? No. Yes. He, um, 
Yeah, we had the audio on the front of the Prabhupada saying, I didn't wish him a hundred times. He went home, we could still keep on hearing the... Yeah, see, so he was able to remember. Just like Prahlad Maharaj. Do you know Prahlad Maharaj? How many have heard of Prahlad Maharaj? So Prahlad Maharaj, how did, who was his father? Yeah. Was he a great devotee? No. So how did such a big, what was he, what is he called? He's called, yes, demon, Asura. So how did such an Asura, like Haradhi Kashipu, had such a great devotee as a child as Prahlad Maharaj. How is that possible? Yes. What's that? I can't hear you. What did she say? Who's thinking of Krishna as enemy. But I believe you had had any have Pallad Maharaj as a son. Yes. Yes, that's right. By the power of association. What association? Who? So who, who was that? Narada. Oh, Narada Muni. Narada Muni. Oh. Who was associ- associating with Narada Muni? <laughs> so, what determines what kind of child you have? How, how, does a ch- how is a child born? The father and mother create the child, right? Did you have a father and mother? <laughs> Isn't that where you came from? Yes. Yes. So. Are your father and mother devotees? No. They're not. <laughs> What's that? And while they're in the forest, 
the demigods thought now they're going to perform austerities and they'll get very they'll get power and they'll conquer the universe. So they wanted to not let her and Kashipu concentrate on his austerities and on his meditation. What are you raising your hand for? Well, you're wrong. Her reaction, how did her reaction become so powerful? <laughs> he also performed those ceremonies. So then he would skill the... Yeah, whatever. So he was in the forest performing the austerities. They don't play around like that. They try to pay attention. Try to pay attention. So he was, in his, he was performing austerities and then the, de the demigods went to Lord Brahma and he asked Lord Brahma, what, they asked Lord Brahma, what can we do to distract Aranyakashipu and Ranyaksha from performing austerities? So, Lord Brahma, well, Narada Muni came with his friend, Parvati Muni, and they said they'll, they said they'll become sparrows and they'll distract them. So Rani Kajipu and Hiranyaksha were in the forest doing their austerities with their arms upraised. And, and Narada Muni and Hiranyi Kajipu came, uh, and Parvata Muni came, and as little birds they started to chant in the, at the top of their voices, Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya. Everyone chant. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya. And they kept on chanting it very loudly. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya. So Hurani Kachipu picked up the stone and he threw it at the birds to get them away because he was disturbed. They were disturbing him. And they flew away, and then they came back when they started to do austerity again. And then, at the top of their lungs, they were chanting, Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya. And they were chanting so loud that they caused this big disturbance of Ranyakta and Ranyakashipu. So they picked up another stone and started to throw it at the birds. And all day long this was going on. The little the birds were coming in the chanting, Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya. And after the whole day, Hirani Kajipu was so disturbed that they decided, and Hiranyaksha, they decided to go back to their homes because they couldn't concentrate on their austerity. So according to the laws of nature, that Harani Kachipu, he wanted to enjoy with his wife, so, but when he was enjoying with his wife, he was thinking of the birds chanting, Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya. So then his wife became pregnant, but their consciousness at the time of conception was such that they were, he was completely in Krishna consciousness thinking of Krishna, thinking of Vasudeva and the birds, which were Narada Muni and Parvati Muni, and so Pallad Maharaj was born. So actually, if we have the association of devotees, and even if we think about Krishna, if we're thinking about Krishna, we actually become purified by the association of devotees. And if we watch television and things like that, play video games, so that's what we'll think about. So Krishna, he can help us either remember him or forget him. Depends what we want to do. If we remember him, then we'll become devotees. And if we forget him, then we'll become like everyone else in the material world. How did anyone ever see, well, we can see outside there are so many trees. So how does someone become a tree? 
Yes. Bad karma. Well, what kind of bad karma do they get?
teach you about? What do most of you learn in school? Yes. Math. Math. So Prabhu says, math, real math, he once wrote to his school students. He said, it's like, one plus one is equal to two. So Krishna plus anywhere is equal to Vrindavan. So if you always remember Krishna, then you'll always be in Vrindavan. So that's real math. That one plus one is equal to two, right? So Krishna plus anywhere is equal to Vrindavan. You know what Vrindavan is? Yes. That's where Krishna is. So if you always remember Krishna, then you'll always live in Vrindavan. You'll always be in Vrindavan. So that's real math. What else do you teach you in school? What's that? English. Yes. Spelling. So, who's teaching you? Anyone? Who's anyone learning about Krishna at home? How many learning about Krishna? So, which is more important, learning about Krishna or learning about math? Would anyone have any questions? Any, yeah. Anyone want to ask? Do you have? and he's on, on a branch, and he's soaring the branch. And someone comes along and says, if you keep on soaring the branch, the branch will break off, and you're going to fall into the ground. And the person goes, oh, you don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> and he keeps on soaring the branch, and it breaks, and he falls on the ground. And then he runs after the man and says, sir, stop, you must be an astrologer. Please tell me your future. <laughs> So, everything's not predetermined, but Krishna can see what we're doing, and he can understand what the results will be. Anyone can do it if they have knowledge. But we can, we can change our destination if we change our activities, and we can change our activities if we change our consciousness and knowledge. If we change our knowledge, then we can change our desire. If we have different knowledge, we can change our desires. And if we change our desires, then we'll get a different destination. But we can only really change our desires if we hear higher knowledge. For instance, if someone doesn't know that they're not their body, that they're actually spirit soul, and doesn't know what Krishna wants them to do, then they'll do whatever their mind and senses tell them to do. And then they'll get their destination. Because we've been all born to different, different bodies, with different mentalities, different desires. It's all been programmed. So if we just follow whatever desires were just coming through our mind, that, that will be our destination, going to our karma. But if we hear a higher knowledge and change our desire, that we hear from higher authorities coming from Krishna, and desire to fulfill those desires, then our destination will be changed from what we were destined to the point of our birth to in the future to achieve achieving something different. 
Is that clear? So our free will means either we can hear from Krishna and his representatives and change our desires to fulfill their desires, or we can just follow the dictation of our mind and senses and wind up wherever that our senses and mind are going to drive us or bring us. So that's our free will. Either we can orientate ourselves towards Krishna or towards this ignorant misconception of thinking ourselves to be a body and mind and follow the education under the false ego. Anything else? Okay, it was nice meeting you all. Who here likes the channel? Anyone here likes the channel? <laughs> oh, oh, thank you. Oh. <laughs>